Healthy Rebel Radio is sponsored by the Healthy Rebel app. 300 plus secretly healthy, delicious, mouth-watering dessert and treat recipes made with all natural whole food ingredients. Now available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Find out more details at HealthyRebel.com. Radio. I'm your host, Dr. David Dizer. I'm here with my Demi Health Healthy Rebel co-founder, Amy Lane. Good morning. Good morning. Just a few quick health and wellness stories to review today. We just returned back from our week-long uh, trip to the woods. Mm-hmm. It was such a nice refresher. It's just, it's just incredible for me to wake up in the woods. I think that's the best part. It is. It's very grounding. It's well. It's literally grounding. I mean, you're in your bare feet on the on the ground, but also. Um, Everything, mentally, emotionally, physically, you just feel so relaxed being in the woods for so long. And being in the woods, the way that we do it, camping, you get physical exercise without really trying. (laughs) Aside from the actual hikes that we take, everything is work. So it's, I don't know, it's just so good on so many different levels. And you're away from, you know, mass media, and you're away from, you know, shopping and buying and consuming, and you're away from everybody. We only had one bar. We only had 3G one bar. I mean, it was... <laughs> we could barely access anything. Oh. I know. <laughs> oh, it was so good. It was really, really enjoyable. We do it every year. I think camping is the best way to reset your life. We love it. I mean, and if you're not into camping, I think like a cabin. Yes. If you can't do, if you just camping is not for you, I think that well, yeah, having, camping takes a lot of prep and resources, and, and it's a lot of work. And for a lot of people, they're like, you know what, this doesn't feel like a vacation. This feels like work, but we enjoy it. We feel like it's like a meditative thing. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think it has to be for you. Oh yeah, definitely. But if it's not for you, I mean, cabins are the yeah. And even if it's hard to like uh, think of like not being around the internet or or cable or whatever, do it anyway. And just do like two to three days. It it can be transformative. I come back with a different resting point. Yeah. And I'm pretty good at limiting my social media and and intake when I'm starting to feel kind of sick about it all. I'm I'm pretty good at just resisting, but actually going to nature just I don't know it feeds a whole other side. Oh, just being outside all the time. I mean, I, a, a few days in, you said to me, I hope you're getting the rest you need because you've been going every day for four months um and then getting set up with the camping is a lot of work but but by a few days in I felt recharged I mean it was it was already good to go yeah but you don't mind doing physical things either if you were different if you were a complainer you know especially where I was pregnant this time and it wasn't as helpful as usual you had to do a lot was on you for sure it's oh it's such a great trip Mm -hmm. and in British Columbia here we've got we're spoiled. Incredible campgrounds. We are spoiled. The one that we go to, I mean, just huge beaches. Yeah, you and... have the woods, then you have the beach. Yeah. Plus you have, you know, that little country town where you can go in and do, like, you know, look at market stuff or get fresh fruits and veg- vegetables. And it's, I don't know, it's just really special. And I stayed away from the pastries. I was very proud of you. Yeah. You usually really... I deserve some respect for that. Yes, you do. You did well. That's the other thing I love about camping. Unless you bring it into your... Well, it's the same way we treat our home, but unless you bring the food into your campsite, you know, the way that we do, we hunker down for a week, so it's not tempting to eat junk, like it's... No, you only bring in, and what you bring in is what you're going to be consuming. That's it. Yeah. So it's a great way for doing a detox, I think. That'd be fun to do it there, too. Yeah. And we do all fruits and vegetables. That'd be really fun to do there. Yeah. But, I mean, you can do these types of things at home, too. You just have to be very strict with yourself. I think that's what people breaking habits it's harder when you're in your routine you're in your home like just think about it when we're like okay let's take we try to take one day off a week from um spending money and from social media it's trickier when we're here Mm -hmm. it's easier when we're not because like you're sitting here and like i'll walk by my desk and i'll see a note and oh gosh did i email them did i do that or maybe we should be talking about this maybe we should be but i mean that's just all self-control and it's a it's one of those things where i think to myself come on amy you're an adult woman Mm -hmm. if you don't you know this is good for you just do it it's like taking a vitamin yeah you know suck it up yeah definitely well you're fighting a human urge though human urge but i always think of it as my ego because at the end of the day if you and i take a full 
say Sunday or Friday or whatever and don't go on the internet. We don't consume mass media. We don't work. The next day, the charge that I feel yeah, it's is different. It's just amazing. I feel so full and so grounded and I don't get swept up in stuff and I feel that I'm able to give way more. It's amazing the kind of society we're in where that feels so free. I mean, just being separate from your technology for a day feels extremely freeing. And it does. If you haven't done it, try it. I mean, my gosh. That's one of the things that I, I do admire about certain religions. Definitely. The whole, you know, the re- day of rest. Mm-hmm. And actually not, you know, participating in the worldly things. I really do admire that. And I really try to implement it. Not in a religious way, obviously. But, you know, they're the originators <laughs> of yeah, the concept. Sure. But it really works. Oh, yeah. I mean, having any type of tradition like that where you're focused on family and focused on maybe inner work or or whatever, it's going to be beneficial. Definitely. I find I eat healthier. Oh, yeah. We always exercise. We always go for huge hikes. I mean, yesterday, how many hours did we... Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Four? Yeah. Four hours we were out. Four and a half. Hiking around. So... Yeah, it's great. Love it. The stories that we have to cover today, my gosh, one extremely interesting one that I'm I'm obsessed with, and I haven't mentioned this to you yet, but this one just came out of London, Ontario. It's a Canadian uh, researcher, PhD, who published this in the American Society for Microbiology. No, it, it was maybe presented at the American Society for Microbiology. Anyhow, it's a it's a breast cancer study. They took three groups, small groups, I think somewhere between 30 and 50, and they did biopsies of their breast tissue. One group had benign tumors, one group had cancerous tumors, and one group was having either breast reductions or some other healthy breast surgery uh, where they didn't have any cancerous cells. And they studied the bacteria in the, in the actual biopsies. And what they found was the women without cancer had better beneficial bacteria. They had different bacteria in their breast tissue. Hmm. Now, we know that um, it's, uh, our, our beneficial bacteria makes it into the milk ducts. Mm. And when, when we breastfeed, we can get good bacteria to the babies. But researchers and, and physicians didn't know if that was being translated into what's in the cells of the breast. And basically they're saying, okay, either these beneficial bacteria are preventing these people from getting cancer or something else is happening here. There's some sort of correlation between healthy bacteria in the breast tissue and not having cancer. Hmm. So there's going to be, so they're going to go obviously much deeper into this and figure out if probiotics could be beneficial in breast cancer prevention. Wow. They also found different immune molecules were upregulated or downregulated depending on what type of bacteria were in the cells, which of course we know is, is how uh, probiotics work in the digestive tract. They, they help regulate the immune system. They help the immune system function properly. And it seemed like in these women who did not have cancer in the study, their beneficial bacteria was keeping their immune system healthy in the breast tissue. So when cells went rogue, the immune system took over. Hmm. So cool. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm into it because, I mean, all the new stuff that came out about, I mean, just this year about probiotics and anxiety reduction, probiotics and weight loss, probiotics and everything good. It makes sense. It does make sense. Like... But, I mean, we're still learning the, about the immune system, though. We're mm-hmm. still learning about the microbiome. We're still trying to figure out how... The immune system these... is the last frontier, I think. It really is. I think is. that's where it's going to... So much knowledge is going to be unveiled. Yes. And I think it's going to cha- be a game changer. And it's going to be in combination with all the new stuff we know about DNA. The other study that came out today was they're, they're looking for potential causes um, uh, for potential situations where cancer can be um, transfer- transferable or contagious. Oh, thank God. Yes. So we, we've known that in Tasmanian devils, there's this type of cancer that is contagious. And we know that in dogs, there's a type of cancer that's contagious. Hmm. We've known this for, for many years. Um, however, what's going on in humans? Is, is there something happening here? We know that there's correlations between infection, certain infections and um, certain cancers whether it be liver cancer or um, there's concerns about uh, bacteria from from milk causing cancer, causing certain cancers. Anyhow, there's this new study about clams. Clams have a contagious form of cancer. They did this study. They were looking at all these different clams off off different coasts of the world, and they found that in certain populations, there was groups with completely different DNA, 
having the exact same types of cancers. Wow. Yeah, very interesting. Um, and they found out that it wasn't viral, it wasn't bacterial. Anyhow, it's another frontier hmm. in, in the way to look at things. And it's like you said, the immune system is the next frontier. Mm-hmm. So how is this all being you know, correlated? I feel like my immune system is much better in the woods, too. Yeah. I, everything is just better. But it's. I think it's because you're not being bombarded by everything, so your immune system isn't burdened, so then you're not as reactive to things. Yes, and that's that, 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 cor- whole, that's that cortisol pathway. Right, because when you're in the woods, you're not as stressed. We're exercising literally nonstop. We're breathing ridiculously fresh air. We're drinking great water and we're eating super healthy and we're going to bed at dark with the actual like that's yeah, the other when thing when the sun goes down the sun goes down we go to bed the sun comes up we wake up with the birds are up, you know, chirping screaming <laughs> screaming some mornings they were loud I mean you don't get mad though do you no it's, it, it's different than being in the city it's you're so grateful yeah but yeah when, when, when you're practicing something that's grounding like that your cortisol goes down your immune system is able to flourish in the way that it's supposed to it's able to handle its business and we sleep with the fresh air yeah that's true too in the middle of the woods that's true too we're very fortunate here too we we basically saw zero mosquitoes well anyways the mosquitoes never landed on me the ones i saw which is really weird i know we're blessed it's because we're so used to the east coast where you're just eating alive yeah so, in terms of stress reduction, I think that that's, it's, it's, it's huge, especially for the immune system. Um, but yeah, it, it's good for anxiety, it's good for, I mean, digestion is good in the woods too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're eating clean food, let's face it. Well, we are. Not everybody is. People no, do hot right. dogs and marshmallows and... I'm surprised the number of people who are still eating hot dogs. It grosses are me you? out. I can't talk about it. <laughs> That can't be part of the show today, folks. No, I can't. No. But it's crazy the amount of people who are still consuming hot dogs. Hot dogs? What about pop? Yeah, pop. Pop and hot dogs. Look, I just... I can't. (laughs) I know. It's happening and it's everywhere. It just grosses me out. I can't do it. It's kind of surprising. It is. I've got another story for us today. And this is... Another one that you might not care about, but I care about because I notice this. Thing. <laughs> I notice this stuff, and, and and so so some researcher is 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 looking to see if humans have a sixth sense. Now you've mentioned this to me many times that there is a potential sixth sense. Whether we get into that today or not is up to you. Um, but this one is talking about the understanding or recognizing magnetic fields. Now I I resonate with this because when I stand in front of an elevator, oh. I can I can feel what's happening. I know that something's going on. I knew you were going to say that. You can too. You love talking about it. Though. I love it. I love it. When when I elevators, my understanding of elevators is that they they rely on magnets heavily. Um, I don't know that to be true. I don't know either. But there's heavy heavy metal resources being used in elevators. Sure. Anyhow, when I stand in front of an elevator, I can feel. Some, something feels different. Something you say a magnetic pull. Something. You've Anyhow, always said this. This researcher is doing some very controlled studies and finding out if humans can recognize magnetic fields or not. Animals can. All other, many, many other animals can. That's been documented. Birds, that's how they get from north to south. That's yeah. how they know. I mean, I'm not denying it. Dogs use the washroom along magnetic field lines. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, that, that's been documented. But I know people that are sensitive to magnetic fields. So I find it... In what way? Hard to deny. How are they sensitive? Um, they say they are. They have reactions to them. I know people that are extremely sensitive to, uh, yeah, tons of different electromagnetic or, um, or, or different wavelengths of things. People are sensitive to all sorts of things. 3G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Moon cycles. Moon cycles. So and how this could I deny be, it? Exactly. This, you know... If someone's saying they're sensitive to something, there's going to be some validity to to it. Something's happening where they're feeling different. Yes. Um, but this case, they put people in an aluminum room and then put magnetic fields around them in certain areas, and they, they were able to sense them. It was only 24 people. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that study. But everyone who, who says about this researcher who presented the, the results said that they respect him, and it was presented at the Royal, Royal Institute of Navigation in the UK. Yeah, I mean, I believe it. No, I'm into it. We'll, we'll, I mean, we'll see if it ends up meaning anything, but it'd be interesting to know 
that we had a sixth sense or we have one or it was some, yeah, some well, we have it, we have a sixth sense but I don't know if it's magnetic field I mean I don't, <laughs> know, if, I don't know if I classify that as the sixth sense I don't know I think intuition is the sixth sense but maybe intuition is just the understanding of electromagnetic fields and how we no <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got one. We have one more story here today, and and this one's important. But I don't know where I stand yet. It, it's this idea that the the London mayor has banned um, the use of ultra thin model photos on buses, in in advertisements around the city. In you know how in in Europe there has been this push to regulate advertising with with for women who are uh, who are ultra thin, or what they've deemed to be ultra thin. Mm-hmm. Some companies have been fined. Right. There's been lawsuits uh, brought forth. Mm-hmm. Now it's you know hyper local in the sense that the, the the London mayor is taking steps to make reductions to advertising in their city. And some people, this New York op-ed I read this morning, New York Times op-ed, that they, they don't agree with it. They think Why? that because they believe that there's it's it's not really the solution. The solution is having a discussion about about all bodies being great and respecting all bodies hmm. I don't but know. how do you get ahead of these companies that purposely target extremely underweight which i would classify as emaciated women and then put them on the and forefront. then raising them up i think it's very difficult to bring huge conversations up against the 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 uh, financial ability that these marketer these marketers have it's very difficult. I mean, I understand all sides of it because then there are women that are naturally thin that, you know, we've swung so far the other way that there will be, you know, someone that's 400 pounds and can't breathe and you can't suggest to them that losing weight would make their life easier. But yet someone that's, you know, naturally thin or fit or whatever, you can say vulgar things to them. You know, on the I know, internet. That's, that's what she's saying. Exactly. You've right. hit it. You've hit it. So I see it you know, drastically in before and after pictures, people will try to, like, even with me, like, they feel like they have to defend my, quote, before picture. The before picture, absolutely. When I never said I was ugly or hideous or there was something wrong with me, I've never said anything like that. I, I was ugly and hideous on the inside. I was killing myself. I was self-harming. I was abusive. I was miserable. I was, didn't really want to live. So, uh... Yeah, I'm very proud of, you know, and the external transformation is a wonderful web tool when people see it and admire it to bring them into being healthy. So that's that's the, the basis of that. But, I mean, people will come in all the time. I thought you were good looking before. I I think you looked better before. Like, And it's just like it's so right. they think They think they're doing that for you no, or they for don't. the person. No, they, they think don't. they do. They think they are. No, they intrinsically, don't. they must know. No, they don't. Because it's not. I don't need to be defended. Right. I don't need my before when I was, you know, in the terrible health situation to be defended. So what I'm trying to say is like, for instance, with women that have babies, you know, there's this woman that she took pictures, she had a newborn baby, and she posted them on the internet and she was like, what's your excuse or something? Because she like got in shape really, really quick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the oh, first gosh. of all, that's very antagonizing. So shameful. Well, it's antagonizing. Yeah. But the internet said horrible things to her. Like it's just over the top. Yeah. Like it's to the point where, like, if you have had a healthy pregnancy and then you, you know, work really hard and you bounce back quick, you can't share that. But like, if you, you know, had the opposite things happen and things went wrong and you gained a bunch of weight and you didn't bounce back and you've still got all this weight on you, whatever, and you share pictures, like, you're empowering. Right. It's, like, we've gone too far. Yeah, we, we, we tend to polarize things, don't we? we like, <laughs> just extremes. whatever your truth is, mm-hmm. that's empowering, as long as the people are being authentic. So, like, it's almost like, as long as it doesn't make us uncomfortable, we applaud the behavior. So, like, say a woman bouncing back really quick and, like, getting really in shape, if it doesn't inspire you, it's going to upset you. So then (laughs) it makes people uncomfortable. So then they lash out at this woman. But, like, don't we want those good examples? Like, I don't love that she said that. What's your excuse? Like, I'm sure that (laughs) it's not about, you know, for anybody that, 
you know, we're all different. We all have different reactions. We all have different times of bouncing back. Blah, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But, like, what's wrong with the success story? When did we all stop? Like, she sounds like she's antagonizing. Who cares? Well, she's still... doing it for the media, and it's working like crazy. I mean, we're talking about it. Right, like right. And But, I mean, she did something awesome. I mean, who, like, why not clap to that? Yeah. You know? And it's her truth. That's her truth. You know, like, I, I get nervous at first with sharing my pregnancy photos because people would be like, oh, you're not very big. Mm. And it's like, okay, like... So <laughs> Should I, I be bigger? So, like, why are you judging me? Like, who says that? And if it was the other way... Like, I just don't get it. I don't get where people are. It's like, everybody wants to be like, don't judge my body, but then they get on the internet and judge everybody else's. Yeah. Like, why don't we all just, like, allow everyone to share their truth? Right. And then respect that truth. And if you find something motivating indulge in it if you don't just turn away but why do we like either have to throw rocks or like it's just weird we're in a weird weird place and like i said we're way more comfortable now with like horror stories or negative stuff than we are like success so this whole it's all a way to hate women to me i know like how do we make this not a way to hate women because i mean the the london mayor thinks that he's doing something really really respectful and positive for women i think at this and, point and, and he, he like his intentions seem to be good his two daughters or whatever yeah and i'm sure and i, I know and it's to. messy and we don't know where to no one knows where to I, like for me right now like i don't think ultra thin models are the issue i think with the whole kardashian movement i think photoshop is what needs to end mm. like i saw a picture the other day of like the picture, like, Khloe Kardashian shared on her Instagram. And then a picture someone took of her, like, five minutes later outside her building. And it's, like... And someone put them together and was, like, girls, stop hating yourselves. Khloe Kardashian doesn't look like Khloe Kardashian. Like, she completely changed the shape of her body. She whittled her nose down. She hired her cheekbones. She took out all shadows of her face. She looks like a porcelain doll in the photos. And, I mean, you see this with Kim Kardashian. Like, you see photos of her you know, pregnant in a bathing suit on the beach and she doesn't have a mole or, <laughs> like, a freckle. Like, it's her skin's from toenail to the top of her head is all one singular color. And, like, then she comes out and says, oh, I was, you know, gained 65 pounds with my pregnancy. And it's like, and there were no ramifications. Like, they don't even have the shape that no. you're seeing. Like, they're, they're amplifying certain things or smoothing out certain things or taking their waist in, like... That's where I think it's dangerous for children. Because yes. it's unattainable. Well, and it's dangerous for everyone who is who's on social media or on the internet. It's just seeing all the types of things that are the, the best version of this person, which tends to not be the real version. Right, and they can do whatever they want. It's when they're dishonest. When, like, these Kardashians say, we've never had liposuction, we don't use this... And, like, you see a photo they share, but then you see them 10 minutes later, and, like, in the photo, their waist is, like, 23 inches, and then in reality, it's, like, normal 35 inches. Like, yeah. something doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's more dangerous right now for children. Like, I look at, like, our cousin, and she's sharing pictures of, like, Nicki Minaj and Beyonce. And, like, these are photos where these women, you know, are, like taken in tiny at the waist and their hips let out and like just not a lump not a bump just like perfect whatever and I'm thinking like she can never it doesn't matter she can't have that no you know then that the thigh gap then the like like doesn't matter if she was had money like it doesn't matter all the plastic surgery like she'll never have that shape because it's not a real body right they don't look yeah, like that right. when yeah. you see them moving and walking and yeah so it makes me sad like on that angle. Oh, I think that's be... I think that's more detrimental right now than the dieting. I think, like, in the 90s, <laughs> we should have went in on, you know, when every model was 80 pounds. And maybe I'm just so far removed that I don't even know what's going on with the models, but, you know. Yeah, maybe. That could be maybe. true, too, but I... But I think you're, you're, you're really on to it. I mean, when people... This is the bigger conversation. People are seeing, basically, fake bodies. They are fake. They're not real. They're, they're they don't they don't look like that themselves. Yeah. So, you know, and they would defend it by saying it's our art, it's our whatever. Well, it's not. I don't know how you sleep at night when you know that little girls are looking at that and trying to be that, and you know mm -hmm. that they can't because there's no such thing. Yeah. You know that's what makes me sad. Yeah, like, no such thing. like, 
you know, it's like the whole bullying and that whole conversation of, like, when grown women are like, well, she's a bully, she's a bully, like, whatever. Like, I think grown women have to start owning grown women stuff. And, like, we have to take charge of this stuff, but we have to acknowledge who it really affects. Like, it's on me if I let this bull crap affect me. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get to a place where, like, I mean, I was the worst. I was the one who was, like, I knew in my head I watched these girls diet and, like, kill themselves to, like, get the abs for the cover, but then I thought I wanted to live a normal, healthy life and still look like, like, I get it. You can get sucked in at any time, but, like, I feel like grown women have to take their power back, mm -hmm. and then we have to protect the, the people under us, the actual youth that don't have the tools and the skills, you know, like, that's where we have to come from. Right, I think the, getting, getting to that, I think, is teaching self-love and teaching that, you know, you're perfect, and everyone is perfect. Everyone's meant to be healthy and happy. And I'm just tired of white 50-year-old men making the decisions of how this is all going to be handled. Right. I'm tired of them talking about what if I use birth control or not, you know, if my tampons are taxed, if, you know, I get to see skinny models on buses. I'm tired of it. Why are all these white men making these decisions? Like, all women in powerful positions are the ones that need to come together, we need to have a global conversation, and we need to be women talking about women's issues. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm tired of it. Yeah. Like, why is this Why is this man making these decisions? Like, I'm, I'm sure his intentions are good, whatever. But, like, then you can swing it the other way. So, skinny women are contraband now? Right. You know? Yeah, and, and that was the interesting thing about the piece. I mean, you, you hit it right on the head. But I think it, it, it brings it back to teaching people to to focus on health and, and focus on and if we stop paying money right yeah you have to support the things and that, stop paying like if you don't like the kardashians stop clicking on the stuff yeah hide every article you see by them don't buy stuff that they're hawking don't buy all the stuff affiliated with them if you don't like seeing overly photoshopped girls blah 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 stop following them Stop purchasing the... Stop telling the companies this works. Yeah, right. That's right. Women have to do this. Grown women have to do this. Yeah, and then it won't be so, it won't be so much of a burden on our young people because we'll be supporting the things that we think are in tune with. That's... Because all they are is just slaves to us and we're slaves to them. So if we just... That's right. They're doing it because it works, right? Like, that's the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, how the hell did she get a 21-inch waist and, you know, whatever? Like... Oh, she uses this. All right, then. Here's all my monies. Like, no. Like, we've got to be... We have to be smarter. You know? And we have to take our power back. Yeah. With our attention and our money. This all started uh, when a couple... I think it was a couple years ago. Maybe it was last year when they said... Um, it was like a picture of a... On a billboard or on a bus or something. It was a, a woman in a bikini and it said, Are you beach body ready? Or yeah. something like this. And that's when, that's when this discussion all came up. Antagonizing. Yeah. Yeah, but then it swings the other way where you can't say uh, bikini body. And everyone's like, I have a bikini body. Well, no shit. And no one said you didn't. But, like, we have to use certain terms to speak certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, it isn't like you can't talk about being a healthy weight or reaching your goals. You can't make that contraband, too. You can't just stop. It's like the whole conversation of, like, you can't just say you can't say that. Right. We need to be able to say everything mm -hmm. and talk about everything and get to a good place. You can't just shut conversations down. Yeah, that's and true. you can't villainize everybody. You know, people have tried to villainize me many times and I'm selling something that... And I'm not. And I, like, in my soul know that. But, like, it's exhausting. Because they're fighting with themselves and using me as the... Right, yeah. You're, the external source. Just the sounding board, really. Right. Yeah. You know, if you have that kind of anger directed at people that are telling you you're not good enough. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a good discussion. It's a, it is a good discussion, but it's a big discussion. It is, yeah. Well, that's it for Healthy Rebel Radio for today. Mm. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. See you. Healthy Rebel Radio is presented by the online health and wellness center, DamiHealth.com. Since 2009, Amy Lane has successfully coached thousands of women through her signature program, the Bikini Body Program. Join today to work exclusively with Amy to unveil your greatest yet to be from the inside out. Go to DamiHealth.com for more information. Thank you for listening to Healthy Rebel Radio. Please connect with us on our community pages on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, all at the handle at DamiHealth. 
For weekly recipes, articles, and all our episodes straight to your inbox, join our newsletter at DamieHealth.com. You can find all the links discussed in today's episode in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and see you tomorrow.